Hello, I'm Atsubo George, and today is Good Friday. Praise God. You know why we celebrate Good Friday? Jesus. Now, it's a day the, the, the world has marked out for us to celebrate the death, the death of Jesus. And then Easter comes up on Sunday, the resurrection of Jesus. Now, we are, of course, not saying Jesus died on Friday and rose on Sunday. Uh, so, so dates. No, it's, it's, we mark it. You see, we mark it. Uh, they all, if you want to mark it, let's go and look for the original dates. Okay. The Bible says, obey those who are in authority. And the government have said, this is the day we are marking. They respect it and they, they've chosen it for that. So, we, we yield to the mind of God and then we mark it. So, understanding, and that's why I was sharing the things we're sharing with you, even this week, the wisdom of the Word of God. Understanding why Jesus died, not just knowing that He died, but understanding why He died is another thing. But hey, before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? It's Good Friday. You need to receive your daily bread. Praise God. Say, Father, I demand from your hands my daily bread. It's coming to me right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, Good Friday is not really a day to be sober. It's a day to rejoice. So he died. You know, all those... Um, movies on, on the death of Jesus, and Passion of the Christ. In the, in the most TVs will be showing it now. <laughs> it's go, oh, oh, hey, no, he's dead long ago. But hey, he didn't stop at dying. He rose from the dead. So we are speaking of it from the other side of the story. This Jesus rose from the dead. And because he rose from the dead, we are alive because of him. He says, because he lives, we live also. The testimony that I'm alive is because Jesus is alive. Only when Jesus dies will I die. Can you say that? The testimony that I'm alive is because of Jesus. And until he dies, I won't die. I come on, I yeah. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Praise God. Yes, so it's a day for us to rejoice and be glad. And tell everyone around you, we're celebrating Jesus. He died for us. And he rose again for our justification. And because he lives, I live. Do you want to live too? Because of Jesus, you can live. Praise God. So that's what we're sharing. All these things we've been sharing with you all week. Praise God. Now today is Friday and it's a holiday. Take your time. Listen to the message from Monday. We'll be talking about the wisdom of God's word. Take it from Monday. Listen and listen and listen. Let the Holy Spirit open up your mind to it. Praise God. You know, yesterday I was sharing with you on... Um, I was sharing with you on the teachings of Jesus. And I said, Jesus told those Jews, if you abide in my words, then you are my disciples and you will know the truth. So I was telling you yesterday, you don't know the truth from the beginning. See, now, the truth of what? That's a question to ask. It says, you shall know the truth. What truth? Truth of what? You see, so Jesus touched on a whole lot of things in his teachings. Now, that's why the Bible is important because this Bible recorded the things that Jesus taught. It's also the same way it records the things God said to different prophets and some of those things are yet to come to pass. So, the Bible is actually a piece of material that is so relevant, even today. So relevant. Because in it, it carries 
prophecies yet, um, yet to be fulfilled and a lot of wisdom from the mind of God. By through the stories he told us and through the actions of men, we we'll pick a lot of wisdom from it. Now I was hoping we we're going to look at some of those things, but then let's trust the Lord for next week. Now at least I forget. Today is Friday. So on we're going to be entering a new month on Monday. Now what that means is on Sunday night, which is the 31st of March, on Sunday night, we are going to be having, um, we're going to be having, uh, starting our prayer and fasting to enter into the month of April. Okay. So plan for this. Prepare your mind for it. The, the, the this meeting holds via Zoom and the Zoom ID and, and passcode is on your screen. And if you desire the link from us, you can request for the link. We're going to send um, the link out to you so you can join us in that meeting. Now, on that day, we begin praying by 12 midnight of the 31st into the 1st, okay? So you leave through the 31st, and then that night of the 31st, 12 midnight, you join us. We use West African time, so wherever you're in the, in the, in the world, you want to join us, and you have to track our timing. So 12 midnight, West African time, we start, and then we pray for one hour, and then we come again, you go for rest, come again at 3 a.m. And then we pray for another one hour. So along all the watches, we'll be praying and having fellowship for one hour. Then we rest and continue like that. I don't think this is one meeting you should miss. Because during these meetings, the Lord begins to give us the wisdom in his heart concerning the month. And this has helped a lot of people. It has helped a lot of people. I received testimonies, you know, concerning this thing. So I don't think it's something you should play around with. Join us. Join us. All these several meetings we're going to be holding from the text from the 31st night up till 9 p.m. on the 1st. So we're going to be holding, holding these meetings 33 hours like that. Praise God. So I just thought to give that announcement uh, before we continue today's teachings praise god so now he tells us in hebrews that everyone who uses milk is as skilled in the word of righteousness why so because he is a babe so because he's a babe he cannot partake in strong meat okay he cannot partake in strong meat rather he uses milk and why because he is unskilled in the word of righteousness now how is he unskilled in the word of righteousness he, he tries to keep the, let me use this word, command. Now, in this case, Peter showed us the things that we should deal with personally, okay? And then Jesus gave different teachings on things we do personally. For example, Jesus said, take no thought for your life. Saying, what will I eat or clothes? What will I drink? Um, what will I put on? Now, he, 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 he said that and that's in your power. When Jesus said, take no thought, it means take no thought. So don't worry about it. Don't, don't sit down there and say, oh, I don't know what I'm going to eat tomorrow. I don't know. I need a job. I don't know. It says, zero your mind on it. Don't do it. Now, he says, don't do it. It's in your power not to do it. But hey, that is milk. So when you obey milk, I hope you're getting this thing in perspective now. When you obey the milk of the word, the milk are the simple instructions you are given. Now you receive these instructions without understanding the whys. But you are sincere in keeping these instructions. You fight yourself. Now as you go on, hey, this is what begins to happen. The Holy Spirit in you now begins to visit you. Mm. What does he start doing? He begins to bring you to the place of truth. He will guide you into all truth. Okay, I'm not supposed to have been malice. So what am I supposed to do in this situation? See, I'm not supposed to use the wrong words. So what am I supposed to do in this situation? 
I'm not supposed to worry about what I will eat, but I don't have a job, so, and there's no food in my house. I'm not supposed to worry about what to eat. Yes, that's what Jesus taught us. So what, what do I do in this situation of no money, no job? What do I do? I'm not supposed to worry about it, okay? But then I need to eat, so what do I do? See, now those questions begin to propel because first you have made up your mind. You know, for example, you make up your mind, I will not steal again. Never, I will not steal again. Now, it doesn't mean you will not be tempted to steal. I will not borrow again. Another example. It doesn't mean you will not be tempted to borrow again. But your resolve must show before truth comes. I refuse. No, no matter how you are tempted, no way I refuse to borrow. I refuse to do that which is wrong. I refuse. I will not do it. Hey, then the Holy Spirit comes and he begins to teach you truth. Now, when he begins to teach you truth, guess what's going on? He is giving you skills in the word of righteousness. That's what his teaching does to you. He begins to give you skills. For example, there are people who uh, they don't sin because they are just scared. They don't want to go to hell. The day I tell a lie, ah, I feel that day the ground will open and I'll go to hell. So they are keeping God's word or God's instruction, but as, as a reason, their, their reason is fear. It doesn't mean you are skilled in the, in the word of righteousness. You are not yet skilled. When the Holy Spirit comes and he begins to teach you those principles that guides the truth concerning that instruction, and now you begin to see I'll give you an example. On this broadcast, the Lord have told us every day on this broadcast, you're going to make demand for your daily bread, okay? So we make that demand for our daily bread. And unconsciously, because we are obeying, and that's milk, okay? It's milk. Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread. So I do it. Father, I receive today my daily bread. Please give it to me. I receive today my daily bread. I receive today my daily bread. Now, the more I do it, now challenges will come. Say, but Lord, I ask you for my daily bread today. So I receive it in the name of Jesus. Now I begin to see miracles. You know, like it says, the graciousness of God. You begin to see that work in your life. Hmm. God answers you. Do you know, for the past one month, I don't really know how I've been feeding. Oh, no wonder he says, we should not worry. Ah, mm -hmm. he says, take no thought for your life because God takes care of it. That's why he said we should ask him for our daily bread. Ah, mm -hmm. okay. So, how has he been supplying? I mean, people just came to my house and they said, God sent them. They gave me money. They brought food stuff to me. They brought even prepared food to me at different times. Like, oh, okay. So that's what happened for you. Oh, yes. Wow. Okay. Wow. Lord, I noticed this thing is going on in my life. What is really happening? See, now you're enjoying the graciousness of God. You have made up your mind. You're not going to worry, just like Jesus said. Then the Holy Spirit comes and begins to give instructions. Pray like this. Pray like this. See? Now, when he gives you that instruction, you obey him, then you see a miracle. Like, okay, what just happened here? <laughs> Praise God. Now, what's happening? You are being taken into truth. And as you're being led into truth, the skill of righteousness is being given to you. So now you're not just looking at that instruction. Take no thought for your life what you will eat. Now you're looking at it holistically and say, why should I even take thoughts? I have no reason to say, why? Because I asked him for my daily bread and he, he supplies it. Oh, now I understand what Paul meant. My God shall supply all your needs according to his... Ah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Oh, this is what David said. He daily loads us with... Ah, mm, wow. Wow! Now what's going on? 
you are given the skill in the word of righteousness. You see that now? Now, from then, because now you are beginning to use that skill, because you, you find yourself before, when there's no food, Father, I, I believe your word, though. Lord, I believe. But then you grow to that point where you say, why wouldn't there be food? I know food will come. Well, I've asked the Lord for my daily bread today. It, you're building confidence. Then you will grow. See, what you're using, when you're now building confidence, what is he using? The skill in the word of righteousness. You're becoming skillful in the word of righteousness. Now, some people just know, okay, this is the only way God supplies. Just like there are people who, who believe God can only help them through their jobs. So maybe there will be a pay raise or there will be a bonus or something. See, that's where your mind is. You're still not skillful in the doctrine of righteousness where heavenly supply is concerned. So you're still in the level of milk. Because the, you have not been opened yet to the wisdom that is behind God's word. You've not been opened to it yet. It's the Holy Spirit that takes you by the hand. Bible study will not do this. Nah, it won't. I'm telling you the truth, it will not. This is where people get stuck. Yes. From Bible study, all you get is milk, no matter the passage you read. For you to get into the place where you begin to receive strong meat, you must first be given the skills to handle righteousness. And the one who gives you the skill to handle righteousness is the Holy Spirit. How does he do it? In John chapter 15 verse 3, he says, Ye are cleansed or pruned through the words that I have spoken unto you. I love the Amplified Church. He said, the teachings that I discuss with you. See, he discusses teachings with us. Now he is fulfilling what Jesus said he would do. Guide us into all truth. Teach us all things. Are you saying that now? This, this has to do with everything and is applicable in everything in your life. Health also. Okay, God says, if I obey his word, he will bless my bread and my water. And he will put none of these diseases upon my life. But I, I keep falling sick. Why do I keep falling sick? Okay. Let me look at that statement again. If I obey him and do what he says, he will bless my bread and my water. Huh. So why don't I start obeying? Why don't I start obeying him? and obeying the word of God. Now you start by the things that have been written, okay? Like I said, this is um, milk. You look at the teachings of Jesus and you begin to imbibe them. He says, take away malice from you. You remove it. You remove it. Then, sickness tries to come, you fight it. Say, I refuse to be sick. Nah. Sickness. Lord, you said you will not put any of this disease upon me. You said so. You said you will not. I hold you accountable to your word. Yeah. Then you experience healing. The graciousness of God. Woo! Man, I thought I was going to be sick yesterday, but I just prayed. And today I feel good. I feel healthy. The graciousness of God. Okay? So you're being introduced. Okay, Lord. I'll keep your word. No, no, no. The next time I feel a slight headache, I will deal with it. And you keep fighting and fighting. And the Lord sees you. And he says, my son, come. Let me teach you the principles of divine health. Then he begins to teach you how he blesses your bread and your water. See, because you get sick most times because of what you take in. So the, when he says, I will bless your bread and your water. So you begin to look out for how... He begins to instruct you on what to eat. He begins to provide for you what to eat. The children of Israel in the wilderness, did you realize the Bible said there was not one feeble among them? You know why? Because God was the one giving them what to eat. It was connected to the manner they were eating. 
Now, these people did not really walk in righteousness. You understand what I'm saying? They didn't walk in right. They were disobedient. They troubled God. But yet, not one of them was feeble. Why? Because of what they were eating. God says, I will bless your bread and your water. God gave them water. God gave them food. Every day, God was supplying them food. You see that food they were eating? There was no death in it. Nothing sickness was in it. Because God chose it for them. So you grow to that point that the Holy Spirit begins to even tell you what food to eat. He begins to give you menu. So yeah, really? Oh yeah. You, you want to walk in divine health? There is more to it than just confessing. As you confess, that's bread. That's, that's milk. I refuse to be sick. I will refuse. To, see, healing is the children's bread. Uh -huh. Healing is babe's bread. Okay. As you go on, the Holy Spirit visits and then he guides you into truth. Then he brings truth to you. You become skillful in the doctrine of righteousness. Then you grow up to solid food. Praise God. My time is up. Oh, glory. I hope these words have been a blessing to you. I pray for you right now. Because, Lord, we are desirous to do your word and to do your will. We are growing from being babies to be in need of solid food. And solid food is the place where we begin to see the wisdom behind every instruction. We see from the depths of your heart. Lord, this shall be the experience of everyone watching and listening. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Remember the instruction or the, the information I gave to you concerning our Zoom meeting on the 30th. Please don't forget it. Plan for it. Set an alarm for it. God bless you. Have the best weekend ever. See you on Monday. Or see you next month. Praise God. Bye.